Often, oh, often people have uh, questions. Oh, don't film me! Pe oh, pe do it. Pe oh, people, do it. yeah, yeah. I thought that was your sister. I didn't realise it was your mum. Uh, I think people sometimes have questions about Islam. Yeah, they've heard things or they've experienced things, and sometimes they'd like to know more about it. Like, why do you do this or why do you do that? <coughs> and so we're quite open about having those discussions oh. with people, and so it just creates a. Um, a greater feeling of, let's say, um, getting to know one another for what we actually believe rather than what the media or what you might have heard or whatever. Yeah. So that's what we're doing here, really. Okay, so what, what negativity do you, do you feel that there is? What is the biggest problem? I think the biggest negativity... I, I'm quite open I understand. To... I think the biggest peril and negativity is being ignorant. Yeah. So if I don't know about you or you don't know about me and we listen to a third person, yeah. we might be told things that might be completely untrue mm -hmm. and that can make us apprehensive or fearful. There is one thing I yeah. don't agree with. Sure. But is it true that you can be married under the age of 16? So in the Old Testament and yeah. in, the, uh, in, in the general belief within most societies, mm -hmm. The age of uh, marriage or consent was regarded to be the age of puberty. Yeah. So you became a woman when you were pubescent. But then some people are 11. Exactly. Or 12. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, actually gave a very comprehensive teaching for this concept. So one of the things that you have to take into consideration are cultural norms as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I get that. Those cultural norms are often going to be created in a way that's going to be best suited for the young women of that generation. So clearly today, even though in Islam, the youngest you can get married is the age of puberty, yeah. our cultural sensibilities, based upon nurture, nature, uh, um, maturity, uh, how long you might live, so the, how, uh, you know, your uh, life expectancy, yeah. So we've deemed that the age is actually much higher because we feel that our girls are not ready yeah. to get married at 12 or 13 years old. So Islamically, I would have to take that teaching and, 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 and um, know that that is relevant for my time. Yes, so for example, if somebody said today, your daughter is 13 years old, would you get her married? And I would say, well, my religion tells me that because of the cultural norms, because of the readiness to marriage, uh, having the level of maturity, psychological uh, readiness, she's not ready now. No. So my religion would say, then you should wait. Yeah. So that so makes it's an individual. It's an individual. So now, I could not say that that rule would apply to a tribe in the Amazon jungle. Yeah. So it, it depends on the area. Does it depend on the country you're in? And the it depends on the culture. In? It depends upon the readiness. It depends on what so. so what society deems reasonable in terms of readiness, in terms of psychological read, re, readiness, yeah. physical readiness. Um, so would you say that Islamic, um, Christ, like the religion in the UK, would be a different set of rules? Yes, because my culture is, because I was born here. Yeah, so this is so, my culture. So you, you're, you're mixing it together Absolutely. with what so, society accepts Yes, so Islam did not come to destroy your individual cultural sensibilities so I was born in this country so I dress like a European yeah, like, so like, I, like I don't I don't have to dress ago, I don't I have covered to myself. yeah respect yeah, right yeah. so I don't have to dress like an Arab because yeah. I'm not Arab yeah. so my culture is more English I would say yeah. than it's uh, Pakistani or Indian where my parents came from mm -hmm. and Islam did not come to destroy that cult those cultural sensibilities it's only when they directly clash with your religion. So, for example, culturally, it's accepted to drink alcohol. Yeah. But my religion forbids it, so, you, so, so I wouldn't drink alcohol. So, as a religion, would you say that you have any animosity or negativity towards other religions, like Christians or Catholics? Or it's how a really you, good question. How do you feel about those people? It's a really good question. So, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said to his companions, you, you are not a true believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. So the people asked him, that, is that brother in faith? And he said, no, it's brother in humanity. In other words, 
I should have the same empathy, love for human beings um, in, in terms of their rights and their value mm -hmm. that I should have for even Muslims. Mm -hmm. Of course, as a Muslim though, I would value somebody who believes in the Creator, who worships the Creator and is obedient to the Creator. But that does not mean to say that I would look at you negatively yeah. or I would treat you badly. And in fact, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went further. He said, a non-Muslim living in a Muslim land under the protection of the Muslims, if he is treated unjustly, I will be his advocate on the day of judgment. Okay. In other words, I will side with the non-Muslim if you Muslims treat him unjustly. Yeah. So there's a lot of emphasis placed upon justice. And this is why one of the reasons that we're here because it's very easy to fall into the trap of the narrative of the media or what maybe you've seen yourself as an anecdotal and come up with the wrong conclusion. Yeah. Um, but in Islam, there's a huge emphasis and it's very interesting because in Harvard University, Two minutes. in the faculty... Girls, you can come and join in the conversation if you want. So in, 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 the, in the faculty of law in Harvard, they wanted to select three statements from human history that best describe justice. And they picked one of the statements from the Quran. And the, and the statement was, O oh, ye who believe, stand up as witnesses, even against yourselves, against your family, against your parents, against your kin, even if one is rich or poor. In other words, justice is something that is paramount even if it's against yourself. So if you judge, if you've done something wrong, then you have to judge yourself. Yeah. Even if it's your parents. So if my father or my mother said something to you that was harsh and wrong, and you came to me and said, look, your mum said this to me. I'm not allowed to stick with my mum and say, mum, she did right and you're wrong. So the moral, moral, the moral high ground has God. to be yeah, respected. Because Allah says in the Quran, Allah likes those who are just. So be just. One other statement is very beautiful in the Quran. Don't let your despising or hating of a people make you unjust towards them. So do you, just one more quick question because I'm going to have to sure. go. But do you um, face or meet many other people that take it to the extremes of terrorism? So personally, no. No. But but why, how, does, how do people end up that In way? that situation. So what, we, what, what we've got to realise is that violence is something that is intrinsic all, within all, within all yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you only have to take two football teams mm -hmm. yeah. and when <laughs> things get a bit rowdy, people yeah. literally throw bricks at one another. Yeah, that's a good way actually of looking at it. Do you know what I mean? There will be terror types of people amongst any... Any organisation, any, organization, any religion, yeah. any religion. In fact, atheists as well, right? It doesn't matter yeah. what religion you are. Yeah, so, just, I mean, yeah. look, people get stabbed because they get cut each other up on the street with on their cars. Yeah. People have died over that yeah. just because he cut in front of me. Yeah. So the propensity to be violent is something that can trigger any human being. And yeah, it could be any religion. So, well. yeah. And so what I say to people is that, look, if you find explicit teachings within the Quran or within the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that actually condone such activities, then you have a very strong argument. But I can produce to you explicit statements where the Prophet peace upon him said that you know that taking the life of one soul is like taking killing all all of humanity. Yeah. This is what the Quran says. Yeah. Anyone who kills uh, another human being, they will not even smell the fragrance of paradise, let alone actually get into paradise. Yeah. So those are explicit teachings. Now there are some people who will twist and turn, and they say, oh well, this could mean that, this could mean this. I, I therefore I can do what I'm doing. But generally speaking, what you'll find is even people like, you know, extreme people like that we've, we've had, like Osama bin Laden. So they came, they asked him, but your religion says that you can't kill innocent women and children. So why are you doing it? He said, well, I'm not doing it for my religion. I'm doing it because you kill my innocent women and children. So I'm going to kill yours. Mm. It's just revenge, basically. Yeah, a, Do you see my point? Yeah. So. Thank you. I'm going to have to go. Not a problem. My, my we've got a free Quran for you. Thank you. And we, I'll, nice give you a, I'll give you a card. Uh, if you ever feel like um, having a discussion offline or whatever, it doesn't have to be filmed or whatever, yeah. that's our channel there. Thank you. Yeah? Nice to meet Please you. do. It was really nice to meet you too. Bye bye. And it's, bye, -bye. It, thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.